హలో ఎవ్రీవన్ ఐఎమ్ డాక్టర్ విశ్వనాథ్ రెడ్డి కన్సల్టెంట్ గ్యాస్ట్రో ఎంట్రాలజిస్ట్ వర్కింగ్ విత్ ది యశోద హాస్పిటల్ సికింద్రాబాద్ టుడే వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ ఫ్యూ పాయింట్స్ అబౌట్ ది ఐబిడి దట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ఫ్లమేటరీ బవర్ డిసీజ్ ఆన్ ది ఒకేజన్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ వరల్డ్ ఐబిడి డే విచ్ ఈస్ సెలబ్రేటెడ్ యూజువలీ ఆన్ ద మే నైన్టీన్త్ ఎవ్రీ ఇయర్ ఇట్స్ బేసికలీ టు ఇంక్రీజ్ ది అవేర్నెస్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ డిసీజ్ కాల్డ్ ఇన్ఫ్లమేటరీ బవర్ డిసీజ్ Uh, as the name suggests inflammatory bowel disease means bowel is nothing but intestine in general words inflammation is swelling in the in- intestine so inflammatory bowel disease is uh, there is swelling in the intestine and it is a disease so why does that swelling happen the swelling happens because of immune dysregulation that's our own immunity is not regulated properly and it acts badly on our own body intestine and uh, causes damage to the intestine in the form of ulcers in the intestine or swelling and then patient comes to us with symptoms of either loose motions or hard motions blood in motions or they may have pain abdomen or loss of appetite weight loss or fatigue these are all the common symptoms which they come to us with in these patients with inflammatory bowel disease so this disease actually is very less previously but nowadays we are seeing more and more cases of this ibd probably because of our diet change becoming more westernized recently so this disease we have to increase the awareness for it and we should get it treated appropriately at an early stage so to know or to detect it at an early stage we should be aware that these are the symptoms of the disease so the symptoms patients present to us is loose motions which are long standing this ibd is a chronic disease that is it's a long term disease so they come to us with a loose motion history for more than few weeks generally any infection food poisoning will happen uh, usually the loose stools will be there for only few days but with this ibd we usually see a long standing diarrhea that is more than few weeks then if you have more than few weeks of loose stools then you should visit your doctor the next symptom is blood in the stools common mis- misconception is that any blood in stools generally they say that it is due to piles or some fissure or something and they usually neglect it but if this happens more frequently this could be due to the inflammatory bowel disease so you have to visit your doctor so loose motions and blood in stool are the two main symptoms apart from that they will have pain abdomen unrelenting pain the pain usually if it is due to an infection it will last for few days and it should disappear but if it is also persisting for long term then also you should get evaluated for that then apart from these three symptoms which are main you also have fatigue because of chronic disease they may have loss of uh, blood knowingly or unknowingly it may be going through the stools and the iron levels also may come down b12 levels also may come down so they will have anemia so anemia will be presenting to us with fatigue commonly then you'll have loss of appetite loss of weight because the absorption problem they may lose weight and because of pain they may not be able to eat then uh, they may also complain of other symptoms sometimes rarely uh, extra intestinal manifestations also this disease can involve the other parts of the uh, body like the eyes sometimes uh, it can manifest with eye redness or blurring of vision and then uh, they may have uh, involvement of the skin they'll have skin rash anywhere in the body usually in the extensor aspects of the body and then they may also present to us with jaundice sometimes with involvement of the liver or the biliary system and then they can also involve the joints so they may present to us with joint pains joint pains involving either the small joints or the large joints and uh, these are the main extra intestinal manifestations there are also some rare manifestations which can present to us but uh, if you have such symptoms you should definitely report or if your relative or someone is suffering for similar symptoms then definitely they have to get evaluated and treated appropriately so then uh, apart from this i would like to uh, inform about uh, the disease pattern this inflammatory bowel disease it's actually uh, two main diseases are included in it called ulcerative colitis which involves only the large intestine and then uh, crohn's disease which can involve anywhere from starting from the mouth till the anus so any part of the intestine like stomach food pipe in small intestine large intestine anywhere it can be involved and disease uh, can manifest with various features like ulcers or they can cause 
perforation intestinal perforation or intestinal fistula formation and uh, stricture formation so there are various manifestations of this uh, disease and uh, apart from these two diseases other two rare diseases are uh, included in microscopic colitis they are more subtle manifestations of these inflammatory bowel disease but they also can cause troublesome symptoms and then uh, coming to the causative factor so we are not sure about the exact cause for this disease but it is thought to be due to genetic predisposition in a patient with immune dysregulation and some environmental uh, stimulus triggering the process of inflammatory bowel disease so three factors like genetic factor environmental factor and immune dysregulation these three factors they play uh, together and manifest in the form of this disease so anyone can be susceptible because uh, earlier uh, our uh, probably the older generations they had a stronger genes and they had a very good diet and uh, a very good schedule of work and other things because of our westernization probably our diet has become more uh, you can say refined type and you are finding many preservatives many thickeners emulsifiers artificial sweeteners which all can actually trigger inflammation inside our body so this is a problem so the diet thing probably if you could uh, take care of maybe we could prevent the occurrence of this inflammatory bowel disease uh, apart from this i would like to inform you about the treatment aspect treatment wise there are many options medical therapy surgical therapy and in medical therapy you have various modalities like simple tablet form powder form there are also injections which can be less powerful also very high powerful uh, medicines which can actually reduce your immunity uh, because this disease is mainly dysregulation of our immunity so we have to probably give a medicine which is suppressing the immunity so there are several uh, medications available which can control the disease effectively and uh, prevent complications and uh, if needed rarely sometimes when there is obstruction or perforation or fistula formation then maybe we can uh, we may have to do a surgical procedure on the patient so these are the treatment modalities then coming to complications related to the disease complications can manifest like obstruction perforation bleeding and uh, the other uh, aspects is development of cancer ulcerative colitis patients can develop colon cancer if it is not controlled on a long term basis because there is chronic inflammation the cells inside the intestinal lining can become abnormal and develop cancer that evolves over few years like beyond 8 to 10 years of disease they may develop cancers so they may have to undergo a regular screening colonoscopy after 8 to 10 years of the disease onset so these are the things which i would like to highlight and um, other things which we can do to prevent this disease apart from dietary and lifestyle changes is probably uh, the environmental factors apart from diet is exercise is one thing and uh, prevention of infections probably we can take uh, appropriate vaccines sometimes they may prevent infections and probably uh, prevent this disease other thing is vaccination in childhood and uh, other important aspect is the usage of antibiotics the indiscriminate usage of antibiotics particularly in the childhood less than 1 year of age they also found that the incidence of ibd is more in such population so the antibiotic usage should be to the minimum as far as possible so these things maybe we can probably uh, disclose to your friends about the disease so that the awareness of this disease which is most silent part and most of the time and presents to us at a later stage or it's neglected till a later stage so we have to increase the awareness such that the disease is caught at an early stage and probably tamed at an early stage with effective medication and prevention of all the complications associated thank you